Uh, just uh, good road wins. Good to get a get a road win. We had not fared too well on the road uh, as of yet for the season, so it's good to get uh, you know that win and you know another win OVC wise. So it's a tough race down the stretch, and uh, you know just talking about the game a little bit. Uh, I thought we played, uh, you know, well the first half. You know, uh, I think defensively gave up some drives. We was able to get some stops in the red zone. Got a turnover, one of Trey Coast picks. You know, happened right there in the second quarter. So that was a, a big turnover. I thought offensively, I thought we played well, took care of the football, and made drives every time we had it in the first half, and and, and got points besides the first field goal you missed. You'd love to have a touchdown on that drive. Would have been a big, big change. And then, you know, third quarter we just didn't play very well. I think we played very well either side of the ball, you know, and uh, like I said, I think one part of that's, you know, I chose to take the win in the fourth quarter instead of the third quarter. Probably would have reversed that knowing the outcome. Uh, hindsight's 2020, right? So uh, I think the win became a factor uh, in, in the third quarter. It was a factor the first half, too. We missed some shot plays early in the game in the first half uh, that would have been touchdowns if we uh, kind of overthrew, but that win was. It's kind of hard to tell where it's come from. It's kind of swirling. You know, you was anywhere from 10 to 15 mile an hour wind, and it does affect your kicking game. It does affect you throwing the football. So, um, and I, I've been up here when it's been a lot worse than that. But, I mean, it did factor in. Especially third quarter, it was blowing a little bit more. And I, I think we just did not get good field position. Every time they got the ball, they were around midfield. Every time we got it, we were backed up. And I think we just were not able in that third quarter to flip the field. And then, you know, fourth quarter, turned it over a few times. You just can't do that. And got to protect the football and you know, find a way to get more points on the board. But uh, it was encouraging when they did score uh, the second time in the third or the second half. You know, we come back down and right down and scored uh, and kind of you know went back up in the game by eight and uh, that was that was very good. And it's just good to get OVC win back home this week. Got big homecoming week. Uh, got this in circle. We've had it circled for a while. You know, Simo uh, beat us on the road last week. We don't feel like we played very well and or last year. And uh, you know, they they played well. They got a good football team. Uh, they they stop the run. Uh, you know, and and they run the football and they they make plays. They got receivers outside. They make plays. Quarterback does a good job managing the game, getting the ball to those guys. they got three running backs that are really good. Offensive line, you're a really, really good offensive line. And then defensively, they're, you know, they got some guys there. So, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be a good game. And everybody will talk about revenge. And they broke a 36-game you know, win streak in OVC for us. And all that stuff goes out to win. And both teams are going to be ready to play. You know, our, our team's going to be ready to play. Uh, you know, their team's going to be ready to play. And after the first two drives, they'll settle into football. And it's going to go back to blocking and tackling. And who does that a better job of that? It's going to be two really good football teams matching up. So it's going to be a fun game. Uh, glad it's homecoming. Glad we're going to have a big crowd. Um, one of the things I'd like to mention off the top of the week, it is a Voices 400th game. Uh, I'm telling his age right now. We aren't going to ask his age. So, you know, we'd like to get the W for the voice this week, too. So, uh, like I said, appreciate everything he does. I, I think a lot of people don't realize how committed he is to our university. I um, mean, just calling everything he calls. And, you know, you'll see him in there on a Wednesday night calling a volleyball game, and he'll be calling our game. And then he'll have overlap here pretty soon where, you know, basketball is starting. He's calling men and women's basketball along with our games. And, like I said, it stays on the road a lot, probably logs more more miles than anybody at the university, I would say. So, anyway, appreciate him and, and uh, you know, glad to – we'd like to get you at W on your 400th game for sure. <clears throat> John, can you just address the playoff implications of this game? And well, this time of year they all got playoff implications. You know, I, I mean, I, I think this one's big and, you know, guess what, next week will be bigger, you know. So, I think they get they, – every one of them's big. And there's there's not a gimme in, in, in OVC. I think I've always talked about it. And I think people think that I'm just, you know, talking. But, you know, we've always won a lot of close games in that 36-game run. And, uh, you know, it's no different this year. I think the parity's even better. You know, you look at the, every week, you know, anybody's capable of beating anybody. And, you know, we, we we got some tough games left, and, and this is one we're focused on. You, you can't look ahead in this conference. Uh, and, and like I said, this one's huge for, I think, both clubs. I think that's the reason why, you know, they're going to come in here ready to play because they know their back's against the wall. They're backed in the corner. So what you're going to do, you're going to fight, and, and our guys are going to fight. So they know, you know, those implications you just mentioned, 
you know, are there. So I mean, you got to you got to battle. You know, every play, and uh, you know, you got to take it one game at a time. And we just want to go, you know, one and zero this week, and, and and get to win somehow, some way. And don't really care how we do that. Just get to win. I don't know. This is one of those games where I mean, I know revenge isn't a factor, but having energy coming into this one's probably shouldn't be too hard, right? It shouldn't be hard any week, you know. I I think uh, every team we play has a lot of yeah. You had a lot of energy before the game against us. They come out and play well and probably play one of their better games of the year. I think offensively, probably played their best game of the year. So, you know, we get everybody's a shot, and you know, we we know that. And this is gonna be no different. But uh, our guys should have no. I think we learned that lesson early in the year, and I think we've been ready to play since. And uh, I don't think we've we've come out flat or anything. You know, we hadn't started the best in the world, but I don't think it's how we were mentally. You know, I mean, I think we've kind of grown out of that, and, and we'll be ready Saturday. I mean, I think we'll have a great week of practice, and you know, we've got a body of work to do, and these guys understand the body of work we got to do during the week and, and get ourselves prepared and be ready to play. And, and it boils down, like I said, to blocking and tackling, and, and hopefully we'll do that, you know, at a high level on Saturday. Guys, have you all thought about this week and the opponent been thinking about this one for a while? <clears throat> yes, I have, but – we just approaching like any other game this season, just the hard work we um, go throughout the week and just the same preparation. Just a faceless opponent. If we come out and play like Jacksonville State play, I'm pretty sure we, um, we'll get the win. How about the cooler weather? I know you're glad to see that. That's kind of have an effect. Yeah, that's, that's a big, big effect. Last week was a lot cooler in practice, and I, I think that helped. The week four was so hot, you know, it was 95 to 99 degrees. And, you know, me and boys talking about a while ago, you know, it, it was 80 something degrees when we got on the plane Friday to go to EIU. And you get off the plane, it's like 44. You know, the wind blowing, a little icy rain, you know, whipping around. So it's going to be good. I think we're going into the 40s tonight, so it's good to have a little fall weather. And, you know, we don't watch out, we're going to go straight to winter like weather. So uh, that's Alabama for you. But it is good to get a little break with the with the heat, and uh, you know we're going we're only ten game run, you know, so it's not any rest for the weary there. I mean, you got to practice the same way you got to practice a pair, but so the coolness I think will help us, you know, with our recovery, and because that's what it's all about this time of year is this recovery and staying in the training room, getting our legs recovered and staying fresh. So uh, the cool weather will, will will be a blessing as opposed to that 90, 90 something degree weather for sure. Darius, can you, can you speak to what it's been to try to lead this offensive line, a young offensive line, as they've gotten more experience and gotten better as the years gone on? Um, it's been a challenge, but I put my I put my all in the O line, and I believe that we we're, we're not young anymore. We're in the middle of the season, so I, I I don't believe that we're young as we were in the beginning. But it's just me being a leader, just pushing them to. To endeavors they had never been pushed through before, just being a big brother to them, being there on that side air, being just just being there, just helped them out. John, how how has he handled that? Well, I mean, he's his veteran guy we got back, so he he's been the mainstay in that room, and uh, that's definitely the youngest that unit's ever been. You know, we've always had <clears throat> three plus starters back up there, you know, and uh, you know we we hadn't had that this year, so he's really had to step up, you know, and uh, you know, uh, Darius is always. Uh, a positive guy. He's got a smile on his face, and he goes to work every day, and you know brings energy to the room. And uh, but he's in a little different role. He he has not had to be that guy, you know. So <laughs> he's had to be that guy this year, and I, I think he's accepted that role. And and. Um, Done a really good job with it. I mean, uh, it's one of the. I have to go in there and talk with them guys sometimes. That's, uh, you know, and I think Trico would agree with me. You know, just in football in general, that's one of the, one of the toughest positions to play. I mean, I got the two toughest positions to play on a football field sitting here with me. You know, as any coach, you better be good up front, you know, and you better be good on the back end on defense, and uh, because everybody knows when he messes up. If he misses a tackle or he misses a, you know, a, a coverage, you know, it's very evident that everybody sitting in the stands who missed it. So there's a lot of pressure on that position because he's a last chance tackler. Uh, they're going to house call it and, and in coverage wise, you get beat. Offensive line wise, same deal. You know, I mean, if you, you get a tackle for a loss, you get a sack. Everybody knows when the offensive line don't play well. And it's a position, I say it's the toughest position because there's not a lot of glory in the position. 
You know, I mean, it, it's the deal where Trico gets a chance to have two interceptions and you kind of everybody knows it and everything. Well, Pancake can have five knockdowns. Not a lot of people know it. You know, so I mean, it's it's one of those deals. They know when you mess up, but they don't really know when you do that good either. So, uh, if you see us run the ball well, or we get a pass off, you know, O line did what they're supposed to do. So, uh, like I said, I appreciate what these those guys bring to the room. I appreciate what he has brought to the room. He's he's been a you know kind of consistent player for us for several years and has handled the leadership role. I think you know really well. And uh, you know he's playing playing as good as he played. Uh, you know right now playing playing at a high level and bringing all. Those young guys along. Talking about safeties, but Marlon lined up like a middle linebacker several times. You know, kind of a package, you know, that we'll, we'll play, uh, you know, where the penny package, rabbit package type deal where he'll play the wheel some and, uh, you know, just you know, to find a way in, in different situations down the distance to uh, get guys on the field we need on the field. Traco, Pancake, just talking about the, the young guys, where you are back there, y'all are old, but the guys in front of you are all young guys. So uh -huh. how does that play a part as far as leadership for you and, and more of um, just showing them, just just showing them like how I, when I when I was young and how I messed up. Just telling them like it's okay to mess up. You gonna mess up your first couple times. Just keep striving to be great though. Eventually it'll come. You keep work on um, practicing hard, working hard. The plays will come. You talk about <coughs> Treco. Kind of seems to. I know interceptions always come at good times, but his seemed to come in really crucial situations. He's had two in the end zone now this year, and the other was stopping them trying to get on the board before the half the other day. Just he's got a knack for getting them in. He does, and I say this all the time. You know, he hears me give him a hard time about it. Uh, yeah, he's one of the and probably the football IQ. There's not anybody any smarter football IQ wise on our. Uh, on our football team than Trey Trey. I mean, he just he studies it. He's got an act for you know the ball and anticipating what's going to happen. And uh, you know he's just a headsy football player, and that's the reason he's why he's in the right spot a lot of times. And uh, he's a good. He's got great cover skills. That that field safety is a tough position to play now. Yeah, there's not a harder position probably on the field than than that position. You know, so a guy's got to be able to make that. You know. Saving tackle there and fit the box and and, and make tackles uh, against good good skill guys on offense and you got to have good cover you got to have a corner cover skills and, and that's what, kind of what he's got and uh, he does he plays at a high level and you know he like I said he's he's grown up as the years have went by you know he's a seasoned player and you know he um, does a good job run fitting and making tackles and uh, you know being in the right spot in the passing game. Kind of looking at Simo on paper, it seems like they really rely on running the ball a lot. You know, you've been talking about line of scrimmage a lot. You know, this season seems like this week it might be more important than it even has. It definitely is important every week, but this week it'll definitely be important. They are a run first team, and uh, you know they got three running backs on offensive line. They gonna put you in formationally in, in a bind, and you know they throw it well enough that uh, you know you got to you got to respect the pass too. So you can't just load the box up, but uh, you, you, they do want to run it. And you know we got to play good up front. You know we got to get all blocks and get a lot of hats around the ball because you know their running backs are good. And, you know I think if we you know play our assignment and uh, you know we get a lot. A lot of folks to the ball and run to the ball will we'll be okay and just play play good defense.